Hi guys, just want to show you my paintball hopper and some improvements I did to it to uh, make it a lot more reliable. So the first thing that happened is uh, when I bought this thing, the lid uh, wore out. Uh, there's a slip here that catches on the lip on the hopper itself and eventually the plastic would uh, fatigue and crack and the lip would break off and won't catch anymore. So you'll be playing and then your hopper will uh, open up mid game and you'll spill a bunch of, a bunch of paint. So uh, to fix that problem, uh, I epoxied a magnet on top of this here that's a round neodymium magnet and then I took a second magnet which is the washer magnet you can get this in hardware stores or from a local alarm company uh, it has a hole inside uh, I drilled a little hole in this in this I, I dremeled the lip off here uh, then I drilled the little hole put a little screw in there and it's holding this washer magnet then I used my grinder to uh, cut this off so it has space for the uh, for this latch to move so I can open up the hopper for cleaning so holds pretty nice uh, it takes uh, It takes quite a lot of effort to open it. So um, it's very reliable. I've never had uh, spilled any paint and I ran with the gun being upside down so Second mod which is probably the best improvement is replacement board uh, this hopper doesn't um, the stock roller is quite reliable but it doesn't have automatic unjam and uh, compared to other hoppers such as Virtuous Pyre and uh, Prophecy Z2 it's actually pretty lackluster I would never buy a stock hopper if I had a choice if, if you're deciding if you should buy a Spire or Prophecy Z2 or a die roller uh, go for Prophecy or Spire uh, unless unless you can find the upgrade board for this the upgrade board is called Seed Kit. Um, they the company doesn't exist anymore, but you can still find them on eBay. I found mine on eBay. Uh, they're quite expensive. They usually go for 100, 150 bucks. Uh, at, you can find the whole hopper with the kit installed in it. Uh, they typically go for about 200, 250 bucks used. So um, is it worth the money? Totally. If you can find just the seed kit alone and someone wants 150 bucks for it, buy it. No questions asked. Um, and I'll show you why. The main number one function that makes this hopper much better than anything else on the market is the with the seed kit installed is the automatic unjam, uh, plus the reliability, plus the feed mechanism for die roller is far superior to other hoppers out there on the market. So the way it works is, first of all, the hopper doesn't uh, use sound like Prophecy Z2 to activate itself. It actually uses uh, the vibration of the gun. This thing has accelerometer built in and it'll feel the movement, the, even the minute movement of your bolt inside your gun. Um, and uh, you can actually change the sensitivity as well. And uh, using this movement, it'll judge if it should feed more balls. So um, right now I'm holding the feed arm with my finger to create a condition where the, uh, the ball stack, the feed neck is basically full of balls and uh, you're not shooting then let's say you have a jam you try to shoot but the arm can't feed anymore because the paintball is stuck somewhere here so of course I'm exaggerating I mean typically it'll need only tiniest amount of motion from a paintball gun but uh, because I'm soft and squishy I have to shake it a lot more violent so but you can see it'll actually reverse the direction of the arm and shake it twice to clear the jam I've shot about a hundred, more than a hundred thousand shots through this hopper, and I've had zero jams and one break because of a basically cracked paintball. This is the most reliable hopper out there. Uh, this thing works jams less and uh, doesn't break any paint. It breaks less paint than Prophecy Z2 and probably Spires out there and 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 Pinocchios and HK Army TFX or whatever it's called. This is. If you find a seat kit for a die roller, it'll make it the most reliable hopper out there. Second mod I did, um, um, you can also, uh, you can actually program torque and sensitivity using the hopper itself. Uh, if you turn it on upside down, as you rotate it, it'll go through different menus. So each color is a different setting for the board and you can use this uh, NGM trigger to change the values. So I'm not going to program it now, it's actually preset for it, I like it. For my for my liking. liking. Um, second mod I did is I ran out of batteries a couple of times. The board has a low battery indicator so this light will actually change color. It'll flash blue 
um, or I believe blue or green if you're uh, running out of batteries. The problem with that is the board is preset for alkaline batteries, which means that 1.65 volts uh, per battery when it's fully charged, then about one volt per battery when it's dying. Uh, I sometimes use rechargeable batteries in this, and uh, with rechargeable batteries, and before you scream that I'm using rechargeable batteries, I'm using low self-discharge nickel metal hydride. Uh, if I let the hopper sit for six months in my bag, they'll still be charged. So they're not just your crappy energizer from Walmart. They're actually uh, Panasonic Eneloops uh, 2 amp hour uh, nickel metal hydride low self-discharge batteries. Anyways, um, I ran out of the batteries a couple times playing and uh, got frustrated. Also, uh, the hopper would lie. If I, if I put the rechargeables, it'll tell me that the battery's dying, but it's not because rechargeable batteries are just running at lower voltage. They're 1.25 volts per cell fully charged and about uh, 0.8 volts per cell when, when they're dying. So uh, this will light up uh, and show me low battery, even though my rechargeables are only halfway through their capacity. So to get around it, I installed this voltmeter. And the actual voltmeter looks like this. Um, I had to cut the ears off and I had to glue a green lens on the face of it to hide the segments because the segments are white by default and when it's sunny outside, when the voltmeter is lit up, it's still hard, a little bit hard to read. Uh, the volt, uh, voltmeter is actually, uh, to activate the voltmeter, all I have to do is take a magnet. This is a huge magnet. I have a much smaller one on my keychain. Bring it to my hopper and uh, it'll show me what the voltage is. So right now I'm using three alkalines right now. So it's 4.75, the batteries are brand new. And uh, when I remove this, um, it'll shut off. So the voltmeter draws no power whatsoever when it's uh, not engaged. There you go. How does it look inside? Looks like this. Okay, let me take it all out. Yeah, all focused. So this is how it looks like inside. The voltmeter is sitting behind this plastic clip. Um, it fits almost perfectly between the two posts for the screws. Um, I had to grind about half a millimeter off of each post to fit it in there. Then I used the Dremel tool to cut a rough hole here and then I used the square file to square it up. Then I used silicone to glue this lens on the face of it to conceal the white um, segments when they're not when they're not lit up. This here is a reed switch. Uh, a reed switch is uh, two contacts sealed in a glass tube. Uh, it's heat shrunk and stuck with the some hot snot, uh, hot melt glue to the side of the hopper. I don't intend to take this apart and if I have to clean it uh, I can just Peel it, peel this with a screwdriver. I'm planning to change this to Velcro or something so it's more removable. Anyways, um, uh, when you bring the magnet up, the contacts close and uh, complete the loop. Uh, to connect the voltmeter, I had to cut the wires going between the batteries and the board and connected the voltmeter in parallel. So basically, this goes in and you bring the magnet up to the read switch and it shows you the voltage. So using this, uh, if you know, uh, the voltmeter goes down to 3.0 volts, uh, which is basically, uh, you know, for alkaline batteries, they're pretty pretty dead at three, at three volts, meaning that each cell is about one volt or less. Um, at least you can, you know, if, it's, if it doesn't light up at all, you know you're below three volts for the full pack, so time to change the batteries. But nice feature, so if I'm going into a big game and I do this and it's showing me I'm sitting at you know 3.5 volts, I know my batteries are kind of low, so might be a good time to change them. Anyways, just wanted to show you my uh, die roller. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, subscribe for more cool paintball gimmicks. See you later.